Welcome, I'm Dr. Tom Warren, and you're watching The Plant Doctor. This is our March question and answer session. So I, I posed a question to a couple of Facebook groups and said, throw me, if anybody has questions, throw me your questions, and I'm gonna do my best to answer those questions for you using peer review and extension articles and my knowledge with advanced degrees in horticulture. So I've got several questions here. I've got them written down. I'm going to go through each one of these individually and try to help you guys be a better gardener. So our first question is from Fela. Fela, I hope I'm saying your, your name correctly, uh, P-H-A-L-A. And so she is asking about pruning dried flowers off of oak leaves. I did a, a March maintenance video where I said, do not prune your oak leaf hydrangeas right now because you're not going to get flowers in May if you prune them right now. And so she has dried flowers on her hydrangeas right now that she's wanting to cut off. The best thing for me to do is let's go out in the yard and take a look. I've got the perfect example of oak leaf hydrangeas right now. You can cut those dead flowers off to a point, but I wanna show you specifically where. So let's go outside and take a look at that. So I have some really good examples of, of what I wanna show you. You can cut this flower, this dead flower from last year off, okay? What you don't wanna do is to be going back behind these vegetative buds right here and pruning down here. What's going to happen is these two are going to leaf out and branch and you're going to have two flowers here so if i cut here i'm okay i can take that this is dead wood anyway nothing's going to come out above these two buds but if i start cutting back in here that's when i run into trouble with not having any flowers going into may so to get more specific about what i was saying in that other video is you can prune these off back to this first bud but once you get back into this material here you're getting into the area where you're not going to have any flowers come may our next question is from carrie carrie ask, ask how to prevent powdery mildew in the garden so powdery mildew can be a nuisance to any gardener anybody that has ever planted a garden you've probably dealt with some mildew at some point the number one thing that we can do to prevent powdery mildew is to, pr uh, is to plant varieties that are naturally resistant to powdery mildew. Uh, I'll kind of give you an example on the landscape to end of things, golden euonymus. You could almost use powdery mildew as an ID indicator for that plant. I don't care if that plant is in full sun, I don't care if that plant is in full shade, it's going to get powdery mildew. And we see some of that in the vegetable side of things as well. So select a cultivar that's not as susceptible to getting powdery mildew. In terms of cultural practices that you can incorporate to uh, lessen the impact of powdery mildew, if you can, don't water over the top. If you can take a hose or and water underneath the vegetative material, or even better yet, run a drip line underneath your plants and, and do drip emitters, uh, that's the, the main way powdery mildew spreads is if you've got a little patch of powdery mildew on a leaf and a water droplet hits it and it splashes, well, it, t it takes those spores from that mildew and it just spreads it around further and further and further throughout the garden. So that's another thing you can do is don't water from above. Another thing you can do is put plants in their appropriate place. If it's a full sun plant, don't plant it in part shade or full shade because you're just asking for trouble with mildews in general. Any type of fungus is going to like wet, damp, shady environments. So plant your uh, plants in a full sun environment, especially if that plant is uh, calling for full sun on the seed label or the plant label that's coming with the pot. Another thing you can do with your uh, uh, cultural practices is if it's minimal, if you just got a little bit of powdery mildew on something, you can prune that out. Uh, if it becomes more invasive, you may want to spray. I know that's really not a preventative measure. That's more of a, I have it now post condition. What can I do for it? Uh, things like copper sulfate, daconil. You can spray over the top of mildew and it'll take care of it. 
Our next question is from my good buddy, Andrew, down in Birmingham, Alabama. So Andrew asks, what to look for to see if plants are recovering from, from the flash freeze? So Andrew, what we're looking for here is uh, bud development. We're looking for vegetation coming out of the stems. Uh, let's walk outside. The best thing I can do is like I did with Fela. Uh, I showed her where to prune on the hydrangea. Let's look at what we need to be looking for on branches in terms of a plant recovering from a flash freeze. Okay, Andrew. So let me, let me show you what I'm looking at here. These are our buds. And this is what we're looking for on the plant. And you may have some buds that got burned during that flash freeze. For example, I'm gonna show you how to tell if the bud's still good or not. The, I already know this one's bad because I've, I've sampled a few already. But if you can lightly take your finger and it just breaks off like that, here, this one will be another one. See that? I just barely touched it, it fell off. Those buds are no good. But I'm gonna try to zoom in right here. I do have hope for this. That right there, I can rub it. That little bud right there, that tells me this camellia is gonna come back. It's ugly right now. I haven't even pine strawed underneath it yet. I, I'm just, I'm frustrated and I've gotten lazy in the garden here. But this camellia will be okay. It may be the month of May before it looks decent, but it's gonna come back because it does have those small buds. But test those buds. Just lightly rub them between your thumb and index finger. If they break off, they're no good. If they stay on the plant, they're good. Your plant's gonna be okay. Our next question is from our friend, Deb Gates. So Deb is an administrator on the North Alabama gardening page. If you're not in that Facebook group, uh, I would encourage you to be a part of it. There's some really good garden talk that goes on there. Uh, people sharing their ideas, people sharing their successes and failures. It's just a good community of people that are, that are trying to learn together. And, and Deb and a couple other people do a great job with facilitating with that. But Deb asked, how to kill creeping Charlie, but keep clover and dandelions. So Deb, I did some research on this. A lot of these questions, I just know off the top of my head. I know the answer just bang, bang, bang. I had to dig for this. I, I went to peer review, I read extension articles. And so at the end of the day, there's not a very good way to do this. The way that our, our herbicides work, we tend to group weeds into groups annual broadleafs, perennial broadleafs, grassy weeds, uh, sedges, and then we, do, we, we learn about their biochemistry and how we can hack their biochemistry with chemicals to end their life cycle at some point, whether that's uh, before it seeds out or after it seeds out and it has leaves. So clover and um, creeping charley, they are both perennial broadleaf plants. So they fall in the same chemical group. The same group of chemicals we would use to treat creeping charley is the same group of chemicals we're going to use to treat clover, which is trimec. So something that has 2,4-D dicamba in it, and that are the two main ingredients in trimec that are really going to knock back your creeping charley. Unfortunately, it also knocks back your clover. So with that being said, I've got a couple of options for you and neither one of them are fun. You can go out there with the shovel and try to dig it up. And, and I do not envy that endeavor at all. Another thing you, do, you could do that might be a little easier, but you're also going to inevitably kill some of your clover if you could go in and spot spray with Trimec. So the, the thing about Trimec is this, 2,4-D is, is uh, systemic meaning that it, it can go into the ground and a plant can take it up by the roots. So even if you're being very careful and just spraying the creeping charley, as that 2,4-D gets into the ground, if, the, if you've got clover over here and the roots are going underneath the, the creeping charley, it's going to get, the 2,4-D will get absorbed by those roots from the clover and it will kill that clover around that creeping charley as well. I hate that I can't give you a better answer. That's just where the science is at with, with creeping charley and clover right now. Uh, there's not a chemical on the market that I'm aware of 
that is going to knock out Creeping Charlie, but not knock out your clover or your dandelions. Uh, Brenda asked a very similar question. So Brenda asked how to kill burrweed, but keep clover and dandelions for the pollinators. This one's a little bit easier. So burrweed, clover, and dandelion, they're all three broad leaves, okay? Uh, we can control our burrweed with pre-emergent. So the, that pre-emergent has to go down in the fall. We control burrweed with fall pre-emergent. Also, it's gonna prevent your dandelions from coming up as well. So you, you may lose those dandelions, but that clover will still be there. We can put pre-emergence down on clover and be okay. Uh, so my advice would be put down pre-emergent in the fall. I know it's more, I'm doing this on March the 5th. It's a Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon. And so we're a little late with the pre-emergence now. And I think looking back on your Facebook post, you had mentioned pre-emergence and it being late. I think you're on the right track, but we're going to have to wait till like October to do anything about this. So you, you may have burr weeds, unfortunately, this spring and summer, but hopefully going into this time next year, if you do the pre-emergence in the fall, you won't have that issue going into next spring. Uh, Diane asked the question, how to deter rabbits? So rabbits can be a nuisance for sure. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience in my yard with rabbits. We have a coyote problem where I'm at and we don't have problems with rabbits. We have uh, posters on uh, telephone poles, where's my chihuahua dog, help me find my cat, missing cat, missing dog, whatever. And I hate to tell the people that coyotes got them because we, I've got coyotes, so I don't have a, a rabbit problem. But I did some research for you. I, I did some looking around. Uh, there are some things on the market. they are scent repellents. I have no personal experience with these. I found very little, if any, peer review whether that was in an extension article or going to uh, Google Scholar and, and looking there that had any solid evidence that those work. And even if they do work, I think you have to go put some fresh out after every